Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're talking about the Juki DX2000 QVP. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take care of your machine on a regular basis. Now, when you do a lot of sewing, or any kind of sewing, you're going to build up a little lint here and there. And I'm going to show you how to clean that out, and if you do that, your machine will run like a dream. Also, though, you want to bring in your machine here to Montevilla for regular maintenance, say about once a year. Just like you bring your car in for regular maintenance. Even if there's nothing wrong with it, still you want to tune up, right? So, but regular maintenance is what you should do at home. And this is especially important if you do things like quilting, where you're sewing through a lot of uh, fuzzy batting, or you're sewing with flannel, that can build up lint even faster. If you um, use your machine every day, I would say clean it once a week. But if you only sew a couple times a week, once a month should be fine. Okay, to start with, we want to lift up our presser foot because that opens the tension discs. Then snip our thread up here by the spool, take it out right here. And what that does is it prevents lint from building up here. You don't want to take your spool and pull it backwards out of your machine. So make a new habit snip, pull it out at the needle. Okay, and then we want to take out the bobbin. Put that off to one side. In fact, I'm going to just put that right down here for safekeeping. Then we want to take the needle out. Now, your manual is going to tell you turn off your machine, but for teaching purposes here today, I'm leaving it on so we have plenty of light. So we're going to take out the needle get my screwdriver. And this is this little T-shaped screwdriver comes with your machine and your accessories. So you always want to have your um, needle a little tighter than finger tight because finger tight it could work its way loose. I've got kind of at the wrong angle here. There we go. Go straight down and off to the side. I'm going to put that right down here where it's going to be safe and then we take off the foot. So now the needle and the foot are both out of the way and there's a special parking place for this foot right here in your accessory tray. Okay, now we want to take off, out these uh, screws here. These little screws that hold in the needle plate. And in this way, we will be able to get to the bobbin area. And that's where a lot of your lint is going to build up, is in your bobbin area. Uh, the main reason for that, well, there's two reasons. First of all, that's where all the action takes place as far as, as far as stitch formation, so the thread is working back and forth in there. Also, your feed dogs are pulling your fabric along, which pulls off little microscopic bits of, of fiber, and that could get built up in there too. So I'm going to take these guys off of here. This is a really nice screwdriver that comes with this, because you can either use this end here or this end here, depending on... Um, how much room you have to work the screwdriver and how much torque you need to. This little end here, by the way, is used for adjusting your bobbin case, which in most cases you don't need to, but you can. It's a very tiny little screwdriver. So I'm going to take my screws and put them inside the accessory just to keep them from falling on the floor. Let me lift this off like that. And here we have the bobbin area. Now this is the bobbin case. I can lift that out, clean that on all sides really good, clean in here really good. Now this machine hasn't been used too much, so there's not a lot of lint buildup. But if it had been used a lot, you'd see lint right in here and also in the feed dog. So you want to brush that out really well too. Flannel, I've noticed, will uh, build up in the feed dogs or if you're sewing felt, the same thing. You can also clean down here, but that's not as much of a, a linty area as these areas that I already showed you. Now, you can use your vacuum cleaner hose and brush as you go. You could even use a pipe cleaner to get in there, but avoid using Q-tips because they tend to leave their own lint. And do not use canned air. Now, I've had problems using canned air because I sprayed it too long and it left frost. Frost is moisture, so no canned air. Plus, canned air just blows things further back in the machine, and you don't want that. You want to pull it out. So, to put it back together, this little knob is going to go to the left of that stopper. So that's how you know you've got it the correct way. So you scoop it underneath the feed dogs, 
and drop it down like that. And yes, it is possible to get it in the wrong way. So you want to have that right next to the stopper, just like that. I usually like to rock it back and forth just to make sure it's sitting down on the rim of the hook area. Let me put this guy back on, like this. By the way, your machine does not need to be oiled. And put those guys back on there. Now, I like to get this started with the screwdriver because sometimes it's just kind of hard to get those screws to just want to start. But once they do, there we go. You can kind of do it the rest of the way with your fingers. Now, when you, um, by the way, on, on needles, some needles do come with your machine in your accessories, but eventually with enough sewing, you're gonna run out of needles and you're gonna need to get new needles. Make sure you get good quality needles. Um, no bargain bin needles or, or needles, well, bargain bin, I mean, to kind of, if they're doing a closeout on good quality needle, needles, that's fine. But um, a couple of good brands here that I wanna recommend. Uh, Classe, oh, I didn't bring my other ones, but um, Classe is one good brand, and then Schmetz, you probably heard of Schmetz, that's another good brand. Uh, organ needles, I believe there's some organ needles that come with this machine. Um, or they're way down there. Um, that's another good brand. So stay away from needles that are packaged in like a bubble pack or something like that. They should be in a little package like this. It's a good quality needles. And then the right kind of needle for the right kind of sewing for knits, you want to use like a stretch needle for wovens. You want to use a nice sharp pointy needle uh, that helps penetrate the fabric well or for quilting, same thing. It's called a sharps or microtex needle. But you can still use universal for most general purpose sewing. Okay, and then bobbins. Let me talk to you about bobbins. The type of bobbins that come with your machine look like this. They're called class 15 bobbins. They're plastic and you wanna make sure you get just the plastic class 15 bobbins. No metal ones, nothing that's shorter, wider, rounder, or anything like that. They will work best with your machine if you get the same kind that came with your accessories. Okay, so I'm gonna put this all back on here. And then I want to show you something about putting the needle in. When we put the needle back in, I'm going to start with a, a foot, presser foot not on the machine because I think it's a little bit easier to put the needle in. Now I have this tool here. It's a brush with a needle inserter in the end. It makes it easier for me to put my needle in. We have the flat side. We want to have that facing away from us. I start out poking the needle right down there where it sews and then put it kind of next to that six right there, a little bit to the left of that six. And then we're gonna tighten this up really good, keep with this upward pressure and tighten it a little bit more, just to make sure it's snug. Now, when you put your needle in, make sure that it's all the way up to the stopper, not part way, because if it hangs down a little bit, it could do a little bit of damage, in, or a lot actually. So you wanna make sure it's all the way up to the stopper. Now, yes, of course you can hold it with your fingers, but you're not probably going to get as much control of that as you are with some, a nice little tool like this. And we sell these here. They're just, you know, very inexpensive. Um, so that's how I put that in. And then to put the foot back on, hold the front, foot front to back, line up the stitch hole in the foot with the stitch hole in the needle plate. You can lift up the presser foot a little higher if you need to. Line those up lower that down, and that is putting the machine back together. So that maintenance is fairly simple and straightforward. You can also take this apart if you get a thread tangle. It's a good idea to, to see what's going on. Maybe you could use some tweezers to pull out those threads. Um, there are ways to avoid the thread tangles. In fact, I have a video on causes and cures of thread tangles and how to avoid them. So this video was to show you how to care for your machine I hope you found it helpful. If you have, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to learn more about this machine, we have lots of videos here on our Montevilla YouTube channel. So thanks for watching. Bye.